I so I can actually read button. chat. Yes, you definitely want to be able to read chat. Look at that. We start off with, with a Snoop Dogg gif. Awesome. So, welcome to Roundtable. Is it 62 this week? 62? This is our weekly Isn't event, it? if you've not been paying attention. Same as every Tuesday. Uh, we recap the previous week and our plans for the coming week. And when we're done, we will be probed with your very questions and whatever else comes to uh, your attention at the time. Uh, the whole event is going to be on YouTube shortly after f after if you're to re-listen to. Um, unlike last week where it, things got a little bit squiffy because we were a new channel and all sorts of footage and things went wrong. Um, so thank you for joining. Uh, when the video is ready, it'll go in usually the news channel. General chat is now being recorded. I see the gifts are already flowing. Say hi to YouTube, everybody. Hello. Heavy. That's quite impressive. Have you been preparing that? Or is this some sort of uh, gift technology? I'm guessing he just searched for round table. That's still quite impressive. Uh, as as I said, you know, we'll be, we'll be in the general channel. I will sort out my um, little recording software so that it will uh, record the other channel. I'm just kind of worried it's going to be a little bit small, so we'll have a play with that. Uh, weekly maintenance will be tomorrow, 9am. Uh, same as usual. It's really, really going to be a quick one tomorrow. I think I've got one piece of software I want to wang on one of the servers and then a straight reboot. So probably half an hour, something like that. Yes, don't worry. There's only two plugin updates, two plugin removals. Oh, um, okay. The list list has been going up. Uh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Totally. So, Everything uh, we talked about on Monday. Not only will need coffee in the morning, and maybe it will be half an hour if I'm that fast. Do you want to unveil the ARC stuff this week, then? <clears throat> got to give well, the people what they want. Well, in terms of ARC stuff this week, we have... I'll leave that to the end, actually. Um, quite a few people asking about when they will be able to transfer their Thames and resources to Fjordjur. Yes. Just to clarify, um, that is going to happen when official open up their Fjordjur for transfer. However, Ooh. because Ooh. Unga Bunga tribe, I love that tribe name, better give Unga Bunga some props in chat. Was that a Captain right. Caveman thing, Unga Bunga? I have no idea. Anyway, on that topic, Unga Bunga tribe were the first tribe on our cluster to devastate the Alpha. How do you say Fenrir boss? Yeah, that's what I'm going with. So it was a, it was a Captain Caveman reference, then. Nice. Sorry, I get all excited with all cartoons. Carry on. No, no, that, that, that's all cool. So they absolutely wrecked the boss um, in pretty short order, actually. It went um, very well, didn't it? It did, it did go very well. However, they had, I think, one dino died, and I reckon another 30 seconds in that fight, and uh, Rex's would have started dropping pretty fast. So be prepared if you're going for the alpha boss. Oh, their timings were just so perfect. It was that well thought out. You never know. I think if they'd have rushed it a week earlier, yeah. um, it would have been a different story. <clears throat> nah, they didn't get lucky. They prepped. Oh, oh can we have a prepper? There you go, one eight hundred bunker. <laughs> Every prepper out there. But anyway, as as a result of Bunga Bunga absolutely wrecking that boss, the arc shop has now fully opened on Fuel So that means all the dinos, um, all the resources, all the elements, and everything is available to buy. This also does mean that um, if I manage to get the config updated tonight, the elements on all the bosses on Fjordjur will switch over to Federation Shards. 
So that means Fed shards in their thousands. And then obviously you just spend that to buy element from the shop, or you can use it to buy dinos. Or you can use it to buy resources. You can use it for whatever you want to use it for. And also don't forget those of you who have been stacking Fed shards because you've been supporting, you can now buy your element. So those who are mm -hmm. waiting for bucket loads of element and stuff like that, get get your element. It's all good. So the element on the boss's carnality gets swapped out for their for the equivalent value in Fed shards. So think what was the dragon? There's a somebody uh there's a list in guides actually in the in the arc section of what bosses drop what. So it would be the equivalent to the, to the island drops. Let me have a quick look. I know Abyss made it, I think. Uh, oh, it's never been posted in guides. That's useful. For those, for those who don't know while you're searching, um, the whole Fed Shard thing is actually a really good thing. Um, Fed Shards are equivalent to the amount of element the boss would drop anyway. And you can buy that straight from the shop. But with the Fed Shard, you can actually transfer those through the map, through maps. So you can actually take it off, bring your points on, and move your element around a lot better than you could with, you know, straight element, as you can't transfer element. I like that one, John. That was good. <laughs> I've raised the, uh, the island boss kits. The island kits are actually on the store now. So all you'd have to do is farm up the runes, uh, relics, sorry. And, um, I think we'll, we'll leave those kits as they are for the time being. Don't want to totally wreck progression on the map. <clears throat> No, we're not adding them to the kits for the boss summons on the island. And we're not creating new kits just for fuel drill. If you, if you want to buy the kit to get the... Uh, <coughs> other pieces, by all means. I think the tech code gets a little thing. You found what you were looking for now? No, I can't find it at all. It's not where I was expecting it to be. Uh... Wouldn't be too hard to find. Okay. Search will be my Keep rattling through. Um, I will find. I will find okay. this at some point. Let's let's jump forward then to seven days on rust, uh, and we come back, can't we? So, a few bits of seven days news this week then for the guys that are playing that. Um, going to be trying out something else tomorrow with regards to the connection issues that we've been facing with seven days. Um, don't want to go into massive amounts of detail yet because it's. It's possible it won't work, but I can see a very definite case for it actually making a lot of good. 
and that's basically switching the seven days boxes to a virtual machine run on the main box so still the same amount of power but just being able to put a little bit of control behind how it accesses steam and stuff like that so that's that's going to go on this week um and then i wanted to remind everybody as well darkness is due for a wipe on the 8th um after some discussion this morning we've got some new players some older players wanting to go back so we're going to do the wipe on the 8th uh but i need to know what sort of map are we looking for this time with darkness do you want a normal map do you want a compo map what what do we want so usual dojo slash darkness falls channels for that sort of stuff and start thinking about what size map what we want and how we do it super hard yeah all right so somebody else has helped got to help me find this list i know abyss put together a full list of what all the bosses drop i think it was abyss of all the bosses drop and uh how much fed shards i mean i could access it by looking on the server but hmm. <clears throat> Search is our friend. Or not, as the case may be. Yeah, uh, totally. There we go. Ah. just got it. There we go. Can somebody post that in guides, please? Just like, why is it not there? And I'll edit it up and make it nice. At a later date. Cool, yeah. Or, some, or somebody else can make it, edit it up and make it look nice and post it in guides. That'd be really awesome. Really helpful. So anyway, sorry, back to Ark. Ungabunga killed the boss. They did it very well. Um, hopefully more will follow. Full shops being unlocked. Everything that's available on the other maps is available. And as soon as possible, we will transition element over to Fed Shards, which means people have a lot more freedom and income without leaving the map or fuel drawer. Uh, but do remember, when you sell Fed Shards to the shop, your balance is available across all maps, including docks, even if you want to, if you want to go over to docks and kill yourself. Yeah, your Fed um, Shards are stored against your Steam ID, so you can take those around mm -hmm. wherever you want. Yeah. A little bit of downtime tomorrow, um, and just for some standard updates, nothing amazing is happening, so, like, Nadi said earlier, it should Not be that time in the morning, quick. it isn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is I've started blueprinting some of these raidable bases. Um, so far, um, I have only had one set of coordinates on Scorched Earth handed over to me. I've given a bit of feedback on it in the raidable bases thread we've got running in the dojo. Um, but I would really love to see some more. The thing that I've noticed that has got to be taken into consideration when building these um, bases is they have to be self-contained and imagine that they can be deployed anywhere on a map. So using terrain features as part of your base that you want incorporated into the game probably won't work very well. So. If I go and drop it in the Highlands on Ragnarok, for example, and it was built around um, a rock outcropping on Scorched Earth, it's the rock outcropping isn't going to appear on Ragnarok, so the, the base won't be as secure as you thought it was. So we'd love some more input on that. Um, while I was doing some of that stuff, I was also digging around in our database. And for those of you who don't know, in game you could do forward slash stats, and it will give you some basic stats about your character and your playtime. The stats are separated between the main cluster and docks. Yeah, uh, building on flat open desert is a perfect idea. Um, but Bear in mind, these bases don't have to be massive, Krusty. They can be fairly small, self-contained units. I want to start with the small ones first, get those put in, and then um, turn them into like massive castles and keeps type thing. So anyway, back to my stats. So we have, we have stats tracked in both clusters. And I thought I'd share with you a little bit of what life is like on docks. 
So should be interesting. Most of you prob yeah, I know. Most of you probably know Green or have seen Green floating around. He's been playing recently and uh, seems to have got quite into dogs. Um, so he's actually uh, our leader on docks. He is the champion. He is the man. Simply because he has died 1,327 <laughs> times. <laughs> he's no longer green, he's black and blue. Yeah, wow. that's roughly... Um, I should have prepared this this number beforehand, but um, let me just double check something. It's getting towards Eight, my death count in Minecraft now. Okay, Yeah, that's roughly once every six minutes. Nice. <laughs> um, given his playtime. Um, following up in a very very close second place is uh, Ty Orange from the Dodo Knights who has 896 deaths, but he has played almost twice as long. So he's only dying yeah, once every like 12, maybe 13 minutes. So that's not too bad. So there's a theme running here. If you call yourself after a colour, you're going to do very well at docks. Yeah, completely. Who's, who's the number three? Brown? Number three is Tim the Terror. Tim the Terror, nice. Tim, Tim the Terror in third place. Um with 801 deaths which which I, I think is pretty damn good um that's rage so territory I'm, I'm impressed yeah uh, nobody's been fishing on docks that was the big stat that i was you know going to announce i don't know why but it seems fishing on docks is not is not a pastime that you want to take part in was were there any other any other players on docks that wanted to uh inquire as to any of their stats we've still got um, warfare. Have... we've got a warfare come on and we, we've got a warfare on here uh, pretty sure we do let's have a look where are you warfare it's the oracle of docs how many times has he died not that many oh uh, let me put my little filter on my spreadsheet w Might not be called warfare, you know. I oh, know. There we go. Warfare. Not since we did the relaunch because we wiped the stats. Oh, unfortunately, he got away with that. He's only got six. Only got sixteen minutes play time there. Um, what's going on in general chat? Yeah, we reset. We reset the stats when we launched the new server. You're going to have to try again then. You need to get on the stats board. <laughs> I'll, put some, I'll put some of these stats commands um, into Discord as well. We have them for the main cluster. Um, so for those of the, you that don't know, if you go to, oh, I was going to call it Fred's house, but now it's bot spam or bot commands or whatever. Fred's lost his house. Yeah, I know. I'm sad about that. I've had several DMs so, about that actually, about Fred losing his house. People are concerned. You have you have the option to do exclamation mark stats top and then the thing that you want to see the top ten table for on the main cluster. So boss kills, element kills, missions, OSDs, PvP, tames, time played, element veins, and world boss kills. Damn, Zanzibar, highest purple wave, 101. So that means he's gone up to wave 101 on an OSD, beating Mailer by one. Yeah, zanzi has been cruising on those drops. He's, he's, he's done 11 purple drops, but uh, Board Panda's done 45. The machine. So I can just have a quick look who's killed the most on docks. Holy hell. Uh, Neon the Thrillo. Is that how you spell it? It's pronounce it. 30,743 kills. Uh, Genoa follows up in second place with 23,900. And this is all on docks. Twisted is on 22,700. And Maraxis 
is on 17,658, followed by Thai Orange, Soul the Direwolf, and Captain Crunch. Why is Serial playing Docs? <sighs> oh, Captain Crunch. Captain Wheat Crunchies. I like Wheat Crunchies, the little crisps. Anyways, um, so yes, we've we've got the bases are coming along nicely for the art cluster. Um, so expect our first starter base to be coming in at some point next week, I think. Um, and stat tracking for docs is actually be um, improving it slightly as we go along i want to see what kind of docs creatures people are killing so we can get league tables on like the main boss kills on there and individually track those um other than that i think that's it for arc at the moment it's just keeping on top of things make sure things stay running we do have a little issue with gen 2 not showing up on our um, server status, but that should be resolved tomorrow morning. Yeah, when the reboot. Yeah, I'm hoping. Should do. Um, summarizing the seven day stuff, which Nani has already been through, just so we don't forget, the wipe is scheduled for the eighth of August. Really need some feedback on the map that you guys want for that, and we are working on the connectivity issues. So all that leaves now is Rust. Oh, Rust. Do we have a cube? We don't have a cube. Do we have, do we have a cube? We don't. He was going to go get his <sighs> guest appearance and I've just completely forgotten. Oh, so, no. <laughs> Rust-related things then. So where are we with, with Rust? All the server config, I can now say, is completely done. Um, that was signed off on yesterday, I think. So that's completely finished server side now. Uh, vote rewards, kit content, all that sort of stuff is now also completely final and put in stone. Uh, wipe testing, it was the big concern because obviously if things go wrong over a wipe then calamity reigns. Uh, so wipe testing is also complete now which leaves us just adding the web pages and the promotional stuff. So we launch on the 1st, so it's going to be 1st of September. There's a, there's a little post in the dojo in Rust section I believe. Um, if anybody is interested in playing Rust and you're going to be around on the first and want to help to launch it, as many players as we can get would be absolutely awesome. So have a look out if there's some sales on. It usually goes on sale fairly frequently and the date is the first. We'll set a time. I'm expecting it to be prob we'll probably go with about 7 p.m. because that's the time where we're going to be doing the wipes on every Thursday. So if we set it for, say, 7 p.m. on the 1st of September, get yourself a copy of Rust. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I think we've already got probably nine WNG guys who want to play already who've reacted to that post. And Cube says he's bringing 11 or 12 of his guys in as well to play. So there should be a good 20 plus on day one. Um, there's going to be a lot more information coming soon over the next few weeks uh, where we'll, we'll reveal the rates, um, the rules, how things are going to work and try and explain to you how, how Rust fits together and how you play. But it, it's an awesome game. It looks so, so shiny. It looks really cool. It's one of the the nicest looking high frame games I've seen in a long, long time. Wasn't really a massive Rust player before Cube got us involved and said, right, we need one of these. But it's it's blown me away, the attention to detail. And yeah, totally, John, um, major hype. It, it's going to be completely cool. Um, I think they've they've done what seven days should have already done by now. Yeah. In terms of polish and game stability and just generally finishing it off. See that that's it right um, there. If you want to go charging down a slope with an AK forty seven dressed as a rabbit, Rust is for you. I mean, you could you could go charging down a slope wearing no clothes with an AK forty seven and, and a belt full of grenades, riding a horse. Hang on, doesn't Putin do that? It's, it sounds pretty like an accurate description to me. <laughs> uh, um, very probably, you can go gimp if you so wish. There is some outlandish costumes. The decoration is amazing. We'll get some more screenshots up from stuff we've been messing around with. There we go. Um, 
have you got a couple of the other shots as well john like the graffiti on the doors and stuff like that and the customization is just like completely full on the building mechanics are amazing g-men's asking about the wipe schedule for it vp and full wipe so we're starting off with weekly so we're going to wipe every thursday uh 7 p.m you'll keep your bps kits will be reset um everything else goes bang so you will keep your bps weekly and then of course there's the full monthly wipe where everything goes yeah totally if you've if you've got really good feedback if you are like a, a brian russ player and you're really into that sort of stuff by all means the dojo's the place or reach out and get in touch absolutely happy to take feedback on really really you know couldn't couldn't take more feedback if we tried if, if rust is your thing and you've got some stuff to feedback please do the server is up at the moment um all you have to do is go to the modding section search for wng and make sure you tick the empty server box obviously it's completely devoid at the moment because it was in development but if you want to pop on and have a look go for it so to answer all your other questions we have a whole bunch of um posts that will be coming out with information about rust and a whole new and a new section on the site as well that will cover that information about rust yeah as we approach the launch we'll release more information so um, these are the vote rewards this is the wipe schedule these are the server rules it's it's all prepped and uh getting ready to be released yeah um as for what happens in rust stays in rust that's entirely correct we are not linking the rust in-game chat up to the discord no um, um however we will be monitoring it yes so, so we normal rules are going to apply no toxicity comes with rust and people tend to rp their character quite a lot those characters can be quite toxic it can be very very gamer boy very very sort of down and dirty sometimes that's fine what we don't want to see is you know the usual sort of porn politics racism all that's got no place in it the same rules we have on discord yes you're going to get behavior that you're not used to if you're a pure pvp and you're playing arc all the day long the audience on arc is very very different you just have to remember none of it's personal it's a fun game and when you get back to discord that's not going to be going on discord is going to be remaining exactly as it is um to go backwards slightly to, again to g-man's comment just got to keep the hackers out yes very aware of that um two or three things in place to sort that out uh, we have got the usual monitoring software and stuff like that running, so it's going to be keeping tracks of people who are teaming and shouldn't be teaming. It's going to be a trios, duos, single server. So you're okay to play solo, you're okay to play in duos, you're okay to play in trios, but no fours. Um, it's going to be keeping and an eye on proximity of players, especially when you're raiding, sharing vehicles, and yes. all that stuff. But we won't go into too much detail about what we're doing to monitor all of that stuff. No. But it is But it is happening. there. Everything yeah. gets logged. Um, mm. And the other thing I was, I was moving on to as well is we are going to need a fairly decent admin team for Rust. So as I said last week, and I've spoken to Cube about it as well, we will do some training sessions if that's what it takes. Really looking for people who are familiar with adminning but don't necessarily want to play it admins that don't play would be amazing um we have to sort other things out with admins who want to play because obviously it's a pvp server people get very invested in it and they don't like to see admins playing the game so if you've got experience you would like to have a go at adminning and you have a nice calm demeanor and just deal with stuff then again would love to hear it in the dojo there's a rust section up Some of Cube's guys are going to come in as well, so that there are going to be admins about. We've got the tools to deal with stuff, uh, and we will keep around it as always. The also for each wipe, you will be tri blocked. Is that correct? Are we were we going down that route? Sorry. Clan locks per wipe, so you can't hop clans. Yes. So the the only um, excuse you've got for swapping a player really is if you've started at the beginning of the wipe and one of your players has to drop for the entire wipe. Other than that, there is going to be no rejigging of um, plans. So once you form up, 
that's it. Unless your player isn't isn't in for the week, and you know he's not going to be coming back for the week, then that's it. You either drop back to a duo. If you have to kick somebody, you drop back to a duo or a single. Be careful who you recruit. Bring in groups of friends. You generally find in Rust people do that anyway. It's it's one of those games where trust is an issue, so you'll, you'll generally find people playing together who know each other. Well, you don't want people swapping teams mid-fight. You go join one person's team, steal all their shit, go to another tribe, and then join, go to another clan, sorry, and join that. Yeah. To answer G-Man's last question, rates we're going with at the moment, we're going with a two-time server. We've got Quick Smelt on. Um, there are supporter packs you can buy that give you other little perks and stuff like that, but nothing massively, massively game-breaking. Obviously, it's going to have to be monitored. Numbers make a lot of that up, so we may have to shrink and resize, and we'll find a nice balance. The smaller wipes reset your progression and give you a chance to get back in the fight again. So what what will happen very quickly is um, somebody might start dominating, and once they start dominating and getting the gear, um, it'll be very difficult to unseat them. You know, kind of like alpha tribes on arc. Um, so if you have frequent wipes and smaller play sessions, it becomes more about your skill and how quickly you can get your shit together and come back. Okay, I see what you mean. Yes, you can you can swap team members after a wipe, but the wipe is classed as a week. The full wipe is the month. So should should you drop a guy or should you kick have to kick somebody, you're only set back really for a week. Yeah. Correct. Completely. Yes. So the the aim of Rust basically, if you've not played it, is to gather things. You go out collecting wood, you go out collecting metal. Scrap is the main currency in Rust, and you can use that scrap to buy things in your tech tree. Just like an arc, you have a tier tree and you choose what you buy and you allocate. Instead of Engram points, you allocate scrap. So the first week is technically you you getting a little base together, making yourself sort of nice and sort of calm away in a corner, gathering as much as you can. If you pick up any weapons and stuff like that, at the end of the week, you can blueprint those weapons. You lose them, but you keep the blueprint. And every week when we wipe, you keep those blueprints. So the next week is going to be a faster setup, more access to guns quite quickly, You'll know what you're doing. By week three, if you're still around, you've got pretty much all you want to do at that point. And week four, or the end of week three, week four, is go around and just smack as many people as you can, blow some people up, see if you can make some people cry. Yeah, like, like G-Man says, the BPs are what counts. So you stack up, you get all your stuff, get yourself into a good position where that last week or last week and a half, you, you're in a very good place to start raining some hell on people. And it's kind of a last man standing deal. Again, it's going to have stats. It's going to have a leaderboard. So you can keep track on who's doing what. But the main thing is just keep it friendly. Have a laugh. And it's a place to take out some of the uh, pent up frustration that everybody gets. It's it's not at all personal. If you watch the videos out there, you, you see some people with the mic open and they're blaring, you know, fly to the Valkyries as they run across the landscape with an AK killing people. It's... People use it as an outlet. It's it's very RP. It's very tongue in cheek, and people play in very very different ways. There's there's more than one way you can play Rust. You can take it completely seriously and competitive, and I'm sure some people will. You can just have an absolute laugh and mess with people in multitudes of ways. It's just one of those games where at the end of the week, whatever you've done, whatever happens, it wipes. You start again. But yeah, 1st of September, as many as we can. The post is in the um, the dojo for Rust, and if you react to that, then we'll see you on the 1st. The PvE NPCs, um, they're like, well, they're human. They guard, yeah, they guard the POIs, um, point, uh, points of interest, <laughs> the labs, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So Rust, Rust has like major POIs scattered over the map. So like POIs, places of interest. So there was like, there's an airfield, there's docks and harbors, there's lighthouses, there's all sorts of stuff. 
tunnels, um, undersea labs, yeah. all the, sorts. The backstory to Rust basically is the whole island is a great big convict sort of storage unit. Um, after a quite a a bad war, they got tired of people and they just put the bad elements of society on this particular little island. And there are scientists all around and big military facilities and they keep the prisoners in check. Otherwise, the prisoners are allowed to, you know, play Lord of the Flies and run around and kill each other. It's the players then revolt back and you can raid these POIs, kill the scientists, grab their weapons. There's kind of little mini games in there where you have to, like, collect key cards to get to different places. There's there's a massive great big dome on stilts that you have to parkour up and around to get loot. There's there's all sorts of stuff. There's a tank that roams a particular part of the map that if you can take down gives cracking loot to Bradley. Yep. There's a helicopter that flies around quite regular. All this stuff is announced in game for you to go and have a look. And of course, at any point doing any of this, there could be gunfire breaking out and people trying to take your stuff because you've got more than them. I've I've seen people take out, you know, heavily armed guys with machine guns with bows and arrows and stuff and just, you know, run off into the distance with all the shit. It's it's really fun. So for those of you that want to stay up to date and see the posts that are coming out from us about, you know, what our rates are gonna be, what the mods are gonna be, what the rules are gonna be, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, just grab the Rust roll from the README section. That'll also unlock the Rust section of the Discord for you. Uh, where you've got a usual dojo, showcase, guides, and support. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that's missing from there, I think, is we'll need a Rust-specific looking for clan. Yes. Which which players can come on and flood with their clan recruitment posts, which they will be doing. Um, and, yeah, each has their own different style. That that picture is entirely... That, that's more like it. Yes, that is more like yeah. Barney flying the minicopter. And yes, you definitely want to be using airlocks on Rust. Double doors everywhere, multiple points of entry with double doors behind them, all that sort of stuff. And then lastly, I suppose, is the only thing we've got before we sign off this for this week, then, is the support servers. So, Indeed. Uh, we've got War of the Walkers is up, is running. Um, Lady Tula, Hebby, and a few of the others are running around now and having a whale of a time. So if you fancy trying out some Seven Days to Die War of the Walkers, then that's for you. Um, continuing the zombie theme, there's also Project Zomboid, which DJ's been playing quite a lot of recently and posting some pictures. Uh, that's that's good fun, that thing is. It's totally the OCD sort of survived the apocalypse, undead characters, wet dream. It's really cool. And then there's, of course, uh... the Mega Beast Minecraft. No, go ahead. You, I, you did, gonna... <laughs> I did a little session uh, or a little bit of playtime on Project Zomboid last night and this morning. Um, a typical game on that may only last you a couple of days, so it could last you maybe a week. It depends how you get on with it and how kind of into it you get, I suppose. Once you learn the game inside out, then you could probably last forever in there. But, um, yeah, I think... <sighs> By the end of it, my character was chugging so many painkillers, beta blockers, and antibiotics, and had pretty much every part of his body bandaged. Um, yeah, it was a foregone conclusion that I was going to die pretty quick. <laughs> One thing I didn't realize is, um, well, I did realize it, but I didn't. It just kind of dawned on me. I continued on, and I respawned a character, and I'm and I'm looking at the map, and I'm like, Huh, this is the map from my previous character. All the marks I'd made on the map were still there, so I knew which houses I'd searched and which were not, which I hadn't searched. And um, I could actually go back and get all my gear again and load it onto my new character and find my previously zomb zombified body. Yeah, you get to stab yourself in the head. Yeah, it's so awesome. I, had to, I had to go and kill myself. And... Um, collect all the bits that I collected earlier. Uh, zombie land. If you get bitten, it's 100% infection. Not entirely true. Bites. I think scratches are like a 5% chance of infection. A bite is like 25%. Um, and it goes in varying degrees of how likely you are to get turned into a zombie. But um, 
you could get a normal infection, which can be cured by normal antibiotics, um, or you can get a zombie infection. You can't really tell the difference until you've chucked so many antibiotics and it still hasn't gone away. You then know that you're eventually going to turn. But that's a, that's quite a laugh play. And there you go. Scratch, laceration, and bite. That looks... That, me. Not sure you, that's... you can manage them for a while, but from my experience, a bite is fatal every single time. But my average bite yes, is it, like yes. two days, yeah. maybe, maximum. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it the, the game just it sucks for those little things isn't it it's like you just fight off 40 zombies and you're absolutely fine and then you find a really cool chainsaw and then all these things happen and you patch yourself up and you're like oh, it's amazing and then the zombie comes from the bathroom which is the wrong room you didn't check and you were sitting yeah. in a chair at the time and it just sinks its teeth in and it's game over it's just gone it's always the tiny little things that you never see so things like um Close your curtains so the zombies can't see you inside the house, that kind of thing. Um, it has little things in there like TV shows come on at different times of day. So you have to sit down in front of the TV and watch the show. That then gives you skills in, say, like a, if you watched a cooking show, you get more cooking skills. Um, just don't watch the news because that depresses you. Um, there's, there's tons of stuff in that. The So we've, we've for those of you that want to know how to get access to these servers, you obviously have to be a supporter, tier one, two or three. There's a supporter section on Discord. Um, if you have a supporter role, then you can see the games and supporter chat channels. The games channel has descriptions on how to connect. And the supporter chat channel is for your feedback on what games you'd like to see, what changes you'd like to see made on these servers and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now, there was something really important. And I've noticed, you know, it's left left my head like half an hour ago. I forgot what it was. Related to supporter service uh, or no, just nothing in particular. I've got no idea. Okay. As as far uh, as Silver's comment about the Minecraft, no, it's it's not available for non-supporters yet. Um, it's a new thing we're trialing. If they get popular enough, because obviously processors and cores and stuff does cost money to, to be real yes the kit is rented it's better done that way because it allows us to respond to kit changes a lot faster rather than owning the kit ourselves but obviously cores cost money it, they have to be funded somehow um when they get popular enough and if they get popular enough absolutely as we've said before we will look at you know doing the full deal on them making them public and all that sort of stuff um so far, Minecraft has surprised me. It's running absolutely sweet as a nut um, and really, really fun. So it's a possibility in the future, but it, it needs to get more players behind it yet and some more feedback. Yeah, the, the idea super. behind them is they're games that, um, have, games that members of the community have expressed an interest in but we don't have the time to fully support them like we're going to like we support arc and seven days and we're going to be supporting rust yeah however if they ter turn um so we we just kind of like spin the server up and say right guys here you go there's a server you can play on it it won't get the same level of attention as the other games we have however if it then becomes so popular that it's you know kind of like shit our minecraft server's got 30 people playing on it today um and they're constantly on there constantly playing at that point we're like well okay this this is this is serious the community is really interested in this we'll then open it up to the public as well or provide a public version of that for people to play on yeah if it turns out that it totally bombs nobody plays on it for weeks on end um then we'll shut it down and we'll try another game yeah That's, that's the cool bit about it, though, is if something isn't that popular, we can just try Conan. That has been requested so, so many times. Yeah, um, there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole long list of games um, that, that people have expressed interest in. Only so many can run at a time. But yes, we have experience running Conan servers, Space Engineers, obviously yeah. Minecraft, Valheim. Yeah. Um, you know, the list goes on. The two that are requested more than anything else at the moment have to be probably 
Conan. Yes, Tam was one of the uh, people requesting Conan, but there's been a lot of people requesting Conan. And Space Engineers has come across on voice when we all sit there and, and prattle on about games at night. Um, that comes up a lot. Conan's a great game. It is. Um, yeah. The problem with Cronin is the lack of an audience. So if we make that public and we go the whole shebang on Conan, it's just going to bomb like it did before. We did actually have a Conan server. It was set up really nice. Um, we progressed quite far on it. It was really cool. But yeah, if there's if there's twenty people who want to play Conan, you you come tell me. We'll do Conan. We'll do support a server for yeah. a bit. If we can maintain that audience and we can sort of thrive, then by all means. I have I have a strong feeling though. Uh, apart from a brief resurgence due to some free DLC it received a couple of months back, yeah. Um, I don't think Conan is anywhere near us being able to invest a full public mm. server in it, mm. simply because the audience is just not there. Yeah, it's it's unfortunately very very low pop at the moment. It's a shame. Atlas is in a similar place again. Had really good pop uh, popularity. I've seen people met. Yeah, there we go. Atlas already been mentioned. There's nothing technically wrong with it. It's basically Arkham Pirates, but it just never received the love it should have had. And the architecture is a bit um, heavy going. So it's a completely different way of doing it, but it allows kind of MMO sized worlds within the restrictions of the art game engine. Sea of Thieves looks good. Can you host for that? I'm not sure you can host for Sea of Thieves, can you? Didn't think you could. Pretty sure that's on their servers. That's a, yeah. a hosted game, I think. But yeah, I like the idea of pirates too. Yar. There's absolutely nothing it's wrong with people who are interested in playing different games getting together and sort of playing different games. We we do that every night on comms with Phasma. There's a small group of us who absolutely loves Phasmophobia and we play most nights. If not for an hour just to get some ghosts in. I mean, yeah, if I if I had the time I'd be I'd be playing I'd be playing every night if I could, but I can't. <laughs> yes, I've I've heard quite a lot of people liking Sea of Thieves. Drake is very into Sea of Thieves. Precisely that quick. That's that's it exactly. We have a load of people here who are really into the same thing, and Ark has proved the point. They can get on. It is really possible to have a really good community. Play away. I've I've met plenty of people myself. Just I play games on a nightly basis with now different sorts of games. Even just little things doesn't have to be like long haul like Ark. Just tiny little bits and bobs like Phasmophobia. I think at some point we did a bit of see, Dead by Daylight. That looks scary. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so <laughs> bad. It's so toxic. Too old for that. That's that's like uh, know everything backwards, know all your roots, and learn all the little perks. That's that's so not me. Yeah, me getting slaughtered over and over and over. You mean quick? It's like it's like joining. I'd imagine it's something like joining um, a League of Legends um, uh, without having any prior gameplay yeah, experience. Totally, and going straight yeah. into a ranked match. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I got hung up and skewed at every single opportunity. It's good fun though. I haven't played League of Legends for like ages. So yes, use the community if. There's people out there who play games that you play. Use it. Ask about. And and even if and even if you're not playing the games <laughs> we host, feel free to, you know, hang around, talk to people. Yeah, use, use the voice chat stuff. and everything. Yeah, totally. I mean the the numbers we've got in um, the round table tonight is actually quite impressive. So numbers are growing. People are taking notice and people are listening. So yeah, if you've got stuff you want to play. Well, 
let people know. My, my challenge, my challenge for the round table is actually to fill the whole of the left hand side of my screen. Yeah. And we've we've we're getting there. You fill the left yeah. fill the left hand side of the screen and I'll do another shiny event. There you go. <laughs> it's your motivation for next week. Oh, right, there you go. So how many is that gonna take one? So how many have we got in here at the moment? Twenty twenty one. 22, 23, 24. But yeah, I suppose that's true. It depends on the size of your monitor, yeah. 22. So I reckon it's probably, it's probably going to take about 35 for me. This is, I'm, I'm talking on my monitor, 2K screen. Now I'm not changing the resolution. There you go. The rules are set. Think things will get small and blocky. Build DJ screen with people. We'll go mental with the shine you're going to get. Well, we did it in an actual voice channel now because supposedly we're going to be using the chat that's built into voice. And also, when we want to demonstrate and show off things in game, we can actually stream straight to that voice channel and you can watch it. Okay. We had a little play with that last week and kind of got a feel for how it should be done. Yeah. So hopefully next week we'll have the chat integrated and we'll have some stuff that we can actually stream and show you what's going on and yeah yeah and record at the same time and do all that kind of cool stuff it's a bit, ah, bit more I remember what it, I remember what it was now oh um yeah next two days i will be unavailable so this is this is a public service announcement or public service request Please do not PM uh, GMs and admins directly. Tickets or use the channels or get as much help from the community as possible. Um, the only reason I'm not around, my daughter's coming to stay for two days. Wicked Ninjas only fans. Um, Yes, I, I am because I'm connected. Voice. If you can follow and browse around that. Yeah, no, I yeah, I've got the I have the app open on the left hand side, and then I have the web browser open on the right hand side, and I could possibly connect to my phone as well, but you know. Anyways, I think we're done for this evening, aren't we? I think we are. Unless anyone had any specific specific questions. We approach. Oh. Yeah, we're at fifty two minutes. Hey, I took a picture of my finger and nobody sent me money. That's true. That is true. Well, I can take a picture of my toe if you want. I kicked the bin the other day and sliced it open. Ooh, Ooh. so the Fenrir display is up now, Sandy. <sighs> Pictures. Oh, no, 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 pictures. no, 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 no pictures. pictures. You want to go no, to no Ragnarok pictures. and you want to teleport to the Hall of Heroes and you can pay your respects to everybody who's um, got first on buses. So, yes, for those of the, you that don't know, you want to travel off of Fjordjord naked, alone and afraid, and uh, uh, head to Ragnarok. On Ragnarok, you can do forward slash TP. What did we set it as? Heroes? No it might have been heroes. All something. You, you can do a list teleport, can't you? Yes, you can do forward slash TP list. Find out the name of the Hall of Heroes and teleport yourself there. When you arrive at the Hall of Heroes, you will find a whole set of server firsts. Yeah. All laid out in wonderful dioramas in around and in a giant hall crafted by Sandy. It is a work of art. It absolutely is. It is. It is absolutely amazing. You can see all the players, all their 
all in po uh, laid out fighting the bosses that they got the server first on. The only thing that may not be up to date, and I don't, Sandy is probably going to go, damn it, DJ, is we have all the lists of all of our supporters on the wall in the halls, Hall of Heroes. So tier one, tier two, and tier three supporters. Your names are immortalized forever. Tell him, Sandy. Sandy Tell him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> But I highly recommend, and I think I think we end the stream on, um, on that tonight, that everybody goes over to Ragnarok, teleports to the Hall of Heroes, and has a good look around. It's it's amazing. And I'd love to see some screenshots from the visitors in the Showcase channel. And once you're done, you can teleport straight back to the trading post using forward slash TP trade and go straight back to Fjordjur. On that note, go for it. Or not? Mm -hmm. As I said, go On for that it. note. Oh, okay. Um, it says here Do we have any questions? Is there something burning away in your soul you want to answer? Now is the time. No, the bit is after that. The bit after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We've been the Wicked Ninjas. You've all been awesome. Thank you, and see you all next week. And next week will be much fun with video and chat and pictures and things getting pewed. And OnlyFans DJ channels and lists full of people and shiny gun fun. So just remember, this week is a quiet week. People are on holiday. School holidays are starting. So we're all very busy. Um, so just normal maintenance. And yeah. And Conan. Yes. Right, good night, guys. See you next week. Good night. Week.